Good evening from Plunkett Studios in Largo, Florida. I'm Scott. I'm Abram. And we are here with episode 581 of F5 Live, refreshing technology for Sunday, December 6th, 2020. This show is a proud part of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. This week, Libra's seizing the day, Fortnite is tripping up gamers, and Warner Media is almost skipping theaters. Wherever you are and however you're accessing our show, whether it be on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat, through a podcatcher like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn, or a myriad of other options, through our live stream platforms, livestream.com, Twitch, Periscope, YouTube, or Facebook, or of course on our website, plunkitslive.com. Thank you for making us a part of your day. There are two ways that you can do that. The first is Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can go to f5live.tv slash join us, and there you can chat with us during the show, give your feedback on the topics as we talk about them, or you can always subscribe at plugkidslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows, including F5 Live, The Pilch Point, Plug Hits Live Presents, and a whole lot more. And of course, find all of the ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along. Well, Abram, it seems like we were just doing this. <laughs> Yeah, it was, you know, uh, we had to do a, uh, do do last week's episode on Wednesday, and I appreciate everyone's flexibility, or flexibility in particular, because it was uh, a difficult uh, a difficult week for a uh, difficult beginning of the week last week uh, with all the stuff that I had to do for work. Yeah. Uh, for, you know, with uh, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, uh, all that stuff. Um, but... Uh, you know, it. Uh, I'm glad we got through it. We had a we had a nice, um, you know, we had a nice a nice run this year. Had some really nice deals. Did you pick up anything cool on the on Cyber Week, Black Friday week? My new screen here for you. Let me see. I don't know that I have. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I'm set up to go full screen on my side. I am. There we go. I can do this. the The screen that's here that uh, that you are on is one of the. Once again, one of the special deals that we've picked up here for the studio. Um, I got, uh, I got uh, memory cards because you know, but I, that might have been Prime Day. Now that I think about it, because you know we were having trouble with the recorder uh, kicking out. Um, but no, in general, not a whole lot this year. I looked at your monitors. And I almost picked up a couple of them, and I'm like, ah, I've got so many other monitors just sitting around it would be weird to purchase more of them so i decided against it. oh oh you oh you mean the monitor that i own yeah yeah so there is i think it's still going folks um i happen to have two recently bought two the last couple of months not not this week uh two lenovo mo- 28 inch 4k monitors and now uh last i checked they're 239 at new egg mm-hmm. um the model number there it goes under really two model numbers, which are basically the same monitor, but one is a Think Vision and one is just a Lenovo. They look the same. I so I have one of each because one was on sale at one time, one was on sale another. Makes um, sense. The one that's the best price right now is the Lenovo L twenty eight U thirty. Um and last I checked, New Egg had it for two thirty nine. Although that deal could be over, the regular price is two sixty nine. So you know, even the regular price is pretty good if mm-hmm. you, uh, when it's in stock, which it isn't always. Um, and it's they're really good non gaming for you know budget four K monitors, mm-hmm. right? I find that the color and the brightness are pretty good. Um, we actually had uh, it also goes under the name Think Vision S twenty eight U ten. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Um, but they have very thin bezel, uh, very professional, nice looking, uh, you know, chassis. Um, but you know, the drawbacks are, it doesn't have any free sync or, or G sync. So no, uh, it doesn't do HDR and there's a, and there's really a limited number of ports. It's just HDMI and display port and that's it. Um, and there's no cool features like picture in picture. Uh, and the menu is kind of bare bones. The menus are kind of bare bones, uh, but 
uh, good quality. And if you're looking to buy a couple of monitors, which I was to spend, you know, 250 bucks, give or take, uh, on a 4k, on a 4k monitor is, is pretty, it's pretty good. And one other feature they have that is actually really nice is that the power supply is built in. Okay. So, so there's no power brick. It just go like you just run the cable to power. There's no extra power brick taking up space in your in your yeah that's or floor. That's nice. Uh, the the ones uh, for those for those who have encountered us at uh, local events, the monitors that we use for that are the same ones that uh, we have in the studio. Which again goes to explain why buying more of them was crazy because I currently have like eight of that monitor. Um, <laughs> And, uh, okay. So I, I warned people who were watching live that things might go weird. Um, uh, my backup just worked. So huzzah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> hooray for technology. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah. So what those have external power supplies and that kills me, um, because I'm missing two of them. <laughs> Which is no good, right? That's when you lose them. You know, getting a getting a manufacturer's power supply, it's like forty bucks, right? Avery? Yeah, those don't go over USB. They, no one has applied USB C, um, USB C power adapters to monitors, right? Yeah, not that I've seen, and that would be right. that would I mean, be way USB C output, but not USB C power coming in. Yeah, that would be way better. But yeah, so so the big ones that I have are that way. But the ones that we use here in the studio use uh, a regular, uh, just a standard Edison cable. So yeah, that's way better. Oh, way better. I wish all right. of my monitors that were right. that way. So yeah, that's a that's a huge selling point for me. I didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's you know. So I like them. You know, as some folks who've been watching our show a bit know, I'm now on a four monitor setup. These two Lenovo's in the bottom, and my two old Dell 24 inch monitors on the top row. Um, I, I actually would like to, at some point, replace the top two with identical with with two more of these, mm -hmm. um, so that so that everything matches. But having the small ones on the top really isn't bad. Boy, um, boy, do I understand it just that. A, you know, I mean, they're, they're really, I mean, these monitors I've had on the top here, they're older than my son and he's eight, right? I've had yeah. these for like nine years. Yeah. The easily. ones, the ones I've got um, are that way too. They're from uh, 2011 because their year is in their model number, which is fascinating. Yeah. So what can you say? I mean, it's, it's monitors last a long time. Yeah, they do. Some of them which do. Which is why sometimes, yeah. Which is why sometimes you look and you're like, oh, well, this is work. This is one part of my system that's actually working that um, so I'm not going to replace it. Yeah. But yet the quality and, you know, cost of monitors has gotten so much better over the last few years. Yeah, it has. I mean, not that my, my old ones were high quality for their time. And, you know, they were like 450 bucks when I got them. Um, and now, you know, I got monitor that you know, is 250 bucks and, you know, has like more, something like double the resolution and you know, better brightness and color. So. Hmm. Um, figure. we, we might or might not be live on Facebook right now because Facebook's a bit of a mess for live, but it is what it is. <laughs> I did warn that tonight might be a little weird for live. Uh, as we always remind people, the best way to watch us live is at f5live.tv slash join us because we can't control what everybody else does. Um, weird things are weird. Anyway, yeah, I I totally understand wanting all of them to match. I have four identical monitors, so I totally, I totally get it. But then in here, this monitor, literally the bezel is cracked. Uh... <laughs> And it has been for years, probably, I don't know, six or seven years. This monitor has been cracked on the, the bezel and we, I, I don't care. Yeah. It still works. Why? 
<laughs> why mess with success, right? Well, I mean, monitors, monitors last, monitors last forever. Yeah, I mean, do. maybe, maybe, maybe they're not supposed to, but they last a really long, they last a really long time. Indeed. Which is good, you know? Yeah, it's definitely good for consumers because it means that, you know, I've been using the same monitors for a decade. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight, even though we just did a show. We got a lot to talk about, so let's get down to it. This week's Nifty Gifties and F5 Live is proudly powered by the Microsoft Store. Whether you're looking for a new laptop, a tablet, an Xbox, new games, and a whole lot more, you can get them at the Microsoft Store. And remember that current students, uh, faculty, parents, and military uh, can save up to 10% on almost everything. And you can find out about all of that by going to f5live.tv slash Microsoft. All right, we haven't talked about these guys in a while. We haven't talked about the Libra cryptocurrency in a while. Um, but the last time we did, um, the situation was that governments around the world had uh, put extra scrutiny on them. A, because they're a cryptocurrency, and most governments are trying to figure out exactly what that means uh, and, and how it applies to you know their world. And... Because it was started by Facebook. And everything Facebook does gets extra scrutiny. Um, and so, uh, over the last couple of months since last we talked, uh, the, the organization, the Libra Association, has um, made changes. They've brought in executives, um, people to run the organization, people to run the um, sub-brand that is in charge of payment processes. And the thing they decided to do uh, was to rename the whole everything. Um, and it, so it is no longer uh, Libra and the Libra Association. It is now DM uh, and the DM Association. So DM like, C, you know, Carpe DM. Uh, obviously, it's probably a great idea for them to have changed names. The association with Facebook had hurt them. Uh, the association... You know, the, the, the fights, the early fights with governments had hurt them. Some of their early partners left real quick, and it continued uh, to, to kind of hemorrhage partners, and something like this needs some big backing to have any success. So I think the, I think the name changed the rebranding and the, um, both the theoretical and the organizational distancing from Facebook is probably a good idea. Facebook seems to agree because they've also rebranded their side of things. Um, they were developing a wallet for the Libra currency uh, that was called Calibri, and now it is called uh, Novi N O V I to uh, to to signal you know a bigger separation, changes in the in the organization. I think it's probably a good idea. Um, since the stench of Facebook at this point can hurt everything, even Oculus is starting to see it. Um, so, what do you think, Abram? Why is this continuing? I guess that's a whole too many different thing. Too much, too much invested in it. I don't know. I mean, is anybody is anybody actually like what is what is the I, point? I don't know. I legit don't know uh, what they're hoping to like, accomplish does here. Does the world need this? Can't imagine. Do we need another currency? I, Do we, I, 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 I mean, like, I see where the idea of sometimes I understand and sometimes even I can't wrap my head <laughs> around the concept. So I'm a little back and forth on it. The idea of a stable coin being based on, uh, like a, a, a basket of, I think is the term. Uh, the, I hate when something starts, the first thing they have to do is create their own lexicon. Anyway, I, I think it's I think they call it a basket. Basically, it's a collection of different valued items. It could be um, stocks, it could be bonds, it could be um, uh, products. In this case, it's physical currencies. Uh, US dollar, euro, uh, pound, 
yen and something else, I think, um, which, which prevents the currency from doing this all the time. Right. Uh, so I can understand the in theory, the concept wanting to do international wire transfer, but as soon as you say that that's what you're doing, then governments get involved and all the benefits go away. So, <laughs> which is what's happened here. The governments have gone, oh, um, this is going to be used partially for international wire transfer, so you're a bank. And so all of a sudden you start getting, you know, FDIC in the United States and things like that involved and all of the benefits of a cryptocurrency go away. So I'm back and forth on it. Generally, I think it's a bad idea, though. I don't think there's a whole lot of value in it. But a cryptocurrency expert or somebody who thinks they're a cryptocurrency <laughs> expert might have a different answer for us. But I don't know. I'd rather put my money into Dougal's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the currency of the, of the Grand Duchy of Abram. Uh, I'd rather put, put my money into Dougal's. Um, uh, it's been Scott a while. Knows this. Every, it's, about once it, it's about a once while. a year, it comes up yeah, it does. that there's a really weird. Oftentimes, when we talk about Libra, <laughs> yes, called the Grand Duchy of Abram, uh, located at GrandDuchy.org. I have nothing to do with them. <laughs> I just found it find it hilarious when I Google my name that I find this. <laughs> it's just really strange, and apparently, it's like this dude in australia who's called now calls himself like prince john the grand duke of abram or something and he issues coins called and he has his own little bank and he calls them ducals uh, anyway what i'm saying is i'd rather put my money into ducals than into uh than into diem um you know what's interesting? I started to type into Bing. I typed in Avram, uh, and it completed with Avram Pitch, close, mobile app review. So apparently people are searching mobile for you. Review. I don't know. They're searching for you by the wrong name, which is fascinating. Anyway, that's, that's not the point. Just an interesting aside. Um I was going to go look up the website again because I always love to see the pictures. Uh, usually when we do this, anyway, I go look at photos of the, the coins. Anyway, <laughs> the weird, yes. weird tradition that has come lot, out. They're selling for a lot on the, on eBay. Yeah, they are. Really, like, schmancy, because uh, they probably don't really make any. Anyway, <laughs> the, this is my, my point in all this is that this DM thing seems like a waste of time. It feels like the Tizen of the Tizen of currencies. You remember, remember Tizen was, which still exists in some form, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, Samsung and Intel had what the, was the its name before it was Tizen? The watches, right? Yeah, it's on the watches, but before it was called Tizen, it was supposed to be on like Intel was involved, and it was supposed to the operating system was supposed to be across platform so it's supposed to be on like tablets and phones and they had netbooks with it um and then intel gave up on it and samsung took it over and it was called tizen and nobody cares cared about it anymore although it still exists it was the, on some watches uh it was the successor to migo and it was migo and it was originally bada right so migo was a thing years back where even though there were plenty of operating systems around that were dominant windows linux mac os android um ios uh intel had this idea that they in col collaboration with samsung and i think some other players were going to come up with their own operating system called migo and they were going to have migo across every kind of device there was going to be Migo on netbooks, and there was on uh, notebooks and netbooks, and there was going to be Migo on phones. And then one day, and it was it like, all just Intel it, washed their hands of it. It actually, this the story is a little more interesting. Uh, Intel's operating system was called Moblin, um, 
and Nokia's was Mamo, M A E M O, and they merged together to become Mego. And uh, at some point, Nokia said, "We're out," and that left Intel alone with it. And Intel's like, "Well, without Nokia, what are we going to do with this operating system? I guess we're done." Because <laughs> because Nokia had gone uh, Windows Phone for their mobile stuff instead. It right. was an absolute mess of a partnership because it was based on two organizations trying to not have wasted their time and it ended up wasting more of it. <laughs> but it was another example of something where a large company wanted to, large company or companies wanted to create a platform that wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Where there was plenty of established players and 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 it failed but somehow it's been resurrected in something with a very minor presence perhaps that's that will be dm's fate it'll be used in some really small way so yeah like so tizen is now so tizen was was terminated in fate or uh, uh migo was i'm seeing was terminated in favor of tizen and migo became mer m e r which uh also didn't do anything <laughs> Oh, though it supported a lot it of things. It, it's it apparently supported a lot of processors and stuff, and then a lot of things came off of it. Oh, including uh, Jala and Sailfish, which were other operating systems that were a waste of time. There was a thing like at one point there was this strong desire from everybody to be in operating systems. Right, everybody wanted their own mobile operating system, and you know Firefox that, OS. Oh. I interviewed mobile. I interviewed a company at CES a number of years ago who had two primary phones. One ran on Windows Phone and one ran on Firefox OS. And I'm like, "What are you people doing?" Honest to God, take your hardware experience. And this was somebody who was walking up to them with with uh, a Windows Phone in my pocket. And I was like, "What are you guys doing?" Just Put Android on it and move on with your day. Neither of these things are going to be around next year, and neither of them were. And, and as a journalist, I loved it, though, because it was so interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like talking to Blue out in the, the courtyard that same year was a tremendous amount of fun. You know, getting to see the interesting things that were happening was fun. And a lot of those things have found their way, right? They've all weaved their way into the, into the, uh, iOS and Android ecosystems, you know, the notification system for iOS literally is based on, on web OS, which they, uh, actually, they hired almost the entire web OS notification team when HP shut it down, you know, things like that, you know, they, they weave their way into the, into the big ones and, you know, and everybody got out of operating systems and now everybody wants to be in cryptocurrency, uh, or at least they did a year and a half ago when this project got started uh, and now nobody seems to care um, in general, you know, you don't see a dozen new coins being birthed every hour like you did two years ago. Um, and he, he, here we have Tizen, you know, the, the last, the last <laughs> holdout trying to yeah. to to make a, a space in a in a space where there's no need. So I don't know I don't know what Libra slash DM is gonna do here. Um the fact that it sounds like a direct message I don't think is gonna help its brand. Um no they're gonna carpe their own name. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It I I think it continues to be the mess that it always has been. Um, and I don't suspect <laughs> that it's going to get better. That's my, that's my take on it. But you know, what do I know? Facebook's got a lot more money to waste on stupid stuff than you and I do. <laughs> if someone tells you they're going to, they're going to pay you per diem, <laughs> go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was clever. Thank you for that. Abram. <laughs> God. All right, with that. <laughs> the, 
This week's Pilch Point with Abram Pilch is proudly powered by PureVPN. The best way to protect your privacy online is with uh, PureVPN. You can hide your online activities, say goodbye to regional restrictions, and improve your streaming quality. Plus, it's available for almost all of your devices, and you can get a special price and a 31-day money-back guarantee, all by going to pilchpoint.live slash purevpn. All right, Abram, what have we got this week? So uh, we've mentioned before the shortages that are are going on in the really, I guess, the PC world, right? There's there's three hot product lines, and I'm not even talking about consoles, which is, I guess, if you want to include those, there's five hot product lines right now. There's PS5, there's Xbox Series X. And on the PC side of things, there are the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series graphics cards, the AMD Ryzen 6000 series graphics cards, and the AMD Ryzen 5, uh, no, I'm sorry, Radeon 6000 series graphics cards and Ryzen 5000 series CPUs that are all nearly impossible to get. These some of these products, the RTX 3080, for example, have been out for over a month, but you can't get them. I mean, you can try, but as soon as they're in stock, they're out of stock. And the reason is scalpers. There have been a lot of scalpers. Yeah, I was going to say you uh, can get them, but you're going to pay a lot of money for them. Yeah. So there's another way. So if you if money is no object for you, then um then you can buy them because what happens is for example the rtx 3080 card is has an msrp of i believe it's 699 or 799 and you can buy one on ebay for double that and that's because scalpers are coming in and they have bots that will do it within, you know, seconds of it becoming available and they will, they will snap up the inventory and then they will charge you double for it. Uh, and you will find that, that stuff on eBay. You will also find it shockingly enough, uh, to an extent on Amazon. Did you know that on Amazon, no. Amazon has sellers that are basically scalpers. Now you can go, I mean, I, I haven't checked today, but as of like Friday, if you go and you search for like an RTX 3080 card or 3070 card on Amazon, you will find results where it's in stock and like 12, 13, 14, 1500 dollars, and they claim to only have like three, four, or five of them. So that sounds like a scalper to me. Um, so anyway, so what do you do if you want one of these cards? Well, First of all, um, you know, just from a practical perspective, if you want one of these, uh, one way to get one of these cards is to buy a computer with it in it. So, or, or, or one of these CPUs perhaps, because OEMs who make desktops are getting another different supply chain, different supply line than you are. And so, you, so Alienware, um, the Alienware Aurora R10 and R11 have the 3080, 3090, or 3070 card in them. And those are shipping within like two weeks, last I checked. And uh, Newegg actually had one with the 3070 from a company called ABS for $14.99. I mean, that's a whole computer with that card in it. So if you were looking for a whole computer, that might make sense. Now, otherwise, got to keep trying. We have um, on Tom's Hardware some articles about where to go to sign up for notifications and how to try it. And by the way, there's a free uh, open source Raspberry Pi app that will actually turn your Raspberry Pi into a bot to alert you uh, if something goes on sale, if there's something comes in stock. But you got to be so quick. Um, and, and these these scalpers, their bot buys it for them, right? So folks have been uh, people in you know the non-scalper community 
consumers are not happy, nor should they be, uh, and they're fighting back. So in ways that are certainly violate uh, the terms of service of eBay, and might be might be illegal. Um, in our AMD uh, on Reddit, uh, some folks shared uh, the method for creating a fake uh, bidder bot on eBay. And what it will do is it will bid. So I don't think this helps for something that's buy it now. I don't think this works for something that is a, a buy it now purchase. Um, but for something that's up for auction on eBay where people can bid, uh, it will it will bid, a, it'll be a fake person basically and it'll bid a ridiculous amount. It'll bid like $70,000, right? So it'll outbid anything that any human would actually pay, but it's a fake bidder. So it derails that auction. And eBay goes and tries to remove them and the seller I think can do something to report them but it, they're being flooded. Some of those listings are being flooded to where, you know, they've got like 20 people bidding $70,000 or 20 usernames, I should say. And, you know, they're using VPNs and things like that to, to make it untraceable. So, um, so that's something that, you know, that the uh, consumers are doing to fight back against the bots. Another thing that we have noticed, and we're doing a story on this at Tom's Hardware, is there's, and this is a, a kind of a buyer beware story for the rest of us, is that there are some folks on eBay who are putting up listings for the RTX cards, but and possibly other types of cards, but we found we particularly are tracking it on the RTX 3060 Ti, but it's probably happening on all different kinds of video cards um, where it's saying that there's like, you know, it's quoting a price of 399 for like the RTX 3060 Ti, which is MSRP or just slightly above MSRP. So it looks really good, too good to be true. You click through and if you read the description, which the description might be like way scroll down the page, uh, way below the buy button. So someone might just click buy because they're not expecting to scroll down and look for description. And the description says, don't buy this. You're bidding on a piece of paper that has a printout picture of, you know, if you buy this, you're just, I'm just going to send you a piece of paper with a photo of the, the graphics card. You're not getting a graphics card. You're paying $400 for a piece of paper. Uh, don't buy this. We put this up here uh, to, to mess with the bots. Um, and um, I guess the idea is that the bots, that there are bots also scouring eBay and that these bots would attempt to buy something and then they would end up, you know, they would end up wasting their, wasting their money and wasting their time and getting a piece of paper. Um, now, we could argue over the ethics of this. I mean, is it okay to to take uh, from someone even if that someone is a scalper? I mean, I get. Uh, mind you, there's an interesting question of whether or not they're in violation of eBay's, eBay's rules. Um, so eBay has a, has a rule that said, and we've asked eBay about this. eBay has a rule that says that you can't sell nothing. It's like a no, it's called, I think the no item rule. You can't sell people nothing. Um, but on the other hand, they are selling people something. They're selling them a piece of paper. Um, you know, that's semantics because nobody wants, nobody wants the piece of paper. Yeah. It's not um, the thing they think they're buying. Um, in some cases, the headline for the listing on eBay says, see, read description, like you better read this. And others, it doesn't say that either. Uh, it doesn't say that at all. Um, 
so if you i mean in some respect i guess it's buyer or bot beware read the description but on the other hand it's really deceptive and we all know from ebay that like if you go to ebay the descriptions are way down the page and like you wouldn't necessarily feel like the need to read a description of a graphics card that you already know what graphics card you wanted right like oh rtx 3060 ti i know all about it i don't need to read how many ports it has i know what it has it's this price i'm just gonna buy it uh especially when you know it's not even clear that there is a description until you scroll you know scroll down quite a ways so um michelle um Earhart, who is our staff writer at Tom's Hardware, has been uh, looking into this, interviewing uh, some of the folks who were putting up the listings. Uh, one of the folks told her that even though it says no refunds, he has refunded the money of any actual human who bought it from him. Uh, but, um, you know, he's... Uh, more than happy to disrupt the bots uh in this way now i don't know the one thing that's really not clear is does this mean that he's profiting off of it like if he gets if a bot buys it from him for 450 bucks and doesn't give him a refund that means that he got 450 bucks for piece of paper true uh, even though it's a bot i mean by the way when you say it's a bot there's a person behind the bot right yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's that's someone's money, right? Like it's not, you might think the person who would, who would buy stuff this way is, deserves it or something, but you know, they, um, but that's, uh, it's kind of vigilante justice, right? Um, so, but eBay hasn't taken down any of these listings. They have sold stuff through them. And uh, when we asked eBay, they said that you know they just quoted us the no item policy but then we asked whether a piece of paper counts as no item and the person said said something like if a user complained they would probably get a refund or something like that so i uh i don't know uh i mean I do tend to think that eBay probably should consider it a no item because it's, even though it's in the description, it's pretty deceptive. Uh, I'm curious, uh, curious what you think, Scott. Yeah. Um, th this is a practice that's existed for a while on eBay. Um, you know, I, interestingly, uh, some of this came up after our show on Wednesday. Um, and you know, that, I have seen this on eBay for years. I used to spend probably an unhealthy amount of time on eBay, and I got, I got to know the weird ins and outs of things that were happening. And, you know, you go looking for something that is either new and in demand or old and in demand, and oftentimes you'll find listings like this. You and I just joking around both did searches for different products and the first result both of us saw was a photo um and you know that kind of sent us down a weird rabbit hole um but yeah it's definitely it's definitely vigilante -y. and so i don't know that that's a word um <laughs> the the idea that it's trying to throw off the bots in concept, I suppose I get distracting, you know, processor cycles and things like that. But you're absolutely right. There's still money changing hands from a human being to a human being. And it, uh, and, and, and eBay will probably will probably refund it. And the other thing is, I mean, I guess it, it just hassles. um you know, I mean, maybe, maybe there will be someone who has a bot who, who knows. So the other thing that I don't get, but the guy we interviewed said that really that he believes bots will really find this is who trains their bots on eBay as the place to find, to find the video card. Like 
that's where scalpers come to unload their wares Mm -hmm. right that's like that's not where you would go to find the stuff you want to scalp that you go to generally new egg you go to amazon ebay is where they go to unload that stuff it's like the i don't know the pawn shop of (laughs) whatever you want to call it you know like ebay and facebook marketplace you ill ill gotten gains. You get your ill gotten gains else. You go somewhere else to get to get the goods, and then you go there to deal them. So like, it's hard for me to believe that people are. There's a lot of people who are looking for for cards that to then turn around and scalp on eBay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely strange. Um, you know the the ones that we were looking at. Uh, both the the video cards and the the consoles that we were looking at um, on on Wednesday night, uh, they were all at or below MSRP. So, I mean, if somebody didn't know what they had, perhaps, and tried to sell sell a product like that at MSRP, I know, I understand. Most eBay sellers go and search eBay to find what the going rate is before they sell it. But somebody throws something on there for MSRP. I mean, it could still be a good source of scalpable material, but but the likelihood of finding it is going to be lower. And now, as a as a bot, as a scalper, you're having to you know sift through <laughs> listings for photos. So, you know, I, you, you might be able to get a good deal as a scalper. You might be able to source an an extra couple of units, maybe, but there's way more trouble than it's worth. It seems like. Yes. Well, I think that's what, that's what these vigilantes are trying to do is screw up the bidding up, screw up the ROI. I think the ones who are bidding up are probably doing more to 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 stop scalpers Mm -hmm. because they're taking scalpers who already have cards and then making it hard for them to sell their to sell their wares Mm -hmm. right um whereas i i just find it you know and and you know the person that we interviewed really seemed sincere um so you know but I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people were putting up these I'm putting this up for bots. Don't buy it. Descriptions of things are actually doing that as a CYA Mm -hmm. to, to be like, no, 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 I'm not trying to catch to ensnare human beings who are regular consumers with this. Absolutely. I'm just trying to get the bots. But meanwhile, meanwhile, that's who they're, that's who they're ensnaring. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think it could the 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 in the old days. <laughs> it's fun to say that and mean like five or six years ago. Um, <laughs> uh, earlier on in, in eBay's life, um, you know, at the at the launch of the Xbox One or even the the 360, you know, you go back to those generations, and the exact same thing was happening. People were still selling photos or empty boxes, which is the other one, by the way. Um, uh, and that, that existed back then and they weren't trying to fight the bots. They were just trying to scam people out of money. So I'm a hundred percent with you. I think a lot of it probably has to do with, with, you know, covering themselves because they're doing something shady. Uh, but trying to, trying to hide behind this veneer of, of, uh, no, we're, I'm trying to screw up the bots but when somebody pays me four fifty, I'll take it. So, so a- anyway, uh, I encourage folks who are looking for any of these uh, for any of these new components to come to Tom's Hardware.com, where we have stories about the best places to look for them, uh, and. Uh, Stay tuned because we're going to have up a feature about uh, the people who are listing the um, listing the pieces of paper to try to stop uh, scalpers. And we already have an article up called 
bot wars enthusiasts fight ebay scalper listings with false automated bids uh <laughs> that you can check out um that talks all about the uh the automated bids uh, effort so um it's, we live in interesting times at least when it comes to buying your tech for sure well i i really look forward to uh to to seeing this article with the um with the interviews and stuff because it's something that has been fascinating to me for a very long time and the idea of of it still going on but under for different reasons has is, is weird for all the reasons we talked about so i definitely look forward to uh to to seeing this article and uh as always avram i look forward to what we talk about next This week's Extra Life on F5 Live is proudly powered by Razer. Get all the accessories you need to up your game on your PC, console, or mobile device from Razer. Whether you're looking for a gaming mouse and keyboard like we use here in the studio, a webcam and light to improve your Twitch stream, or an entire gaming setup, you can find it all at Razer by going to f5live.tv slash Razer. Speaking of Twitch, one of the topics that... uh has been on our minds as Twitch streamers ourselves, right? We are, if you're watching live, you're quite likely watching us on Twitch right now. Um, so because of that, you know, it's hard not to pay attention to the space. And uh, what we've seen is we're not the only ones paying attention to the space. And uh, the Recording Industry Association of America, uh, RIA, has also been paying attention to Twitch now. Uh, and a couple of months ago, we saw a number of streamers lose videos and um, then get a very weird and vague email with threats in it um, that Twitch ended up apologizing for because they definitely screwed up how they handled the DMCA stuff and have promised to fix it. But there's a couple of problems that that have all kind of culminated into the situation we're in right now. Uh, the fact that Twitch and Twitch streamers have never given any regard to the law. Um, you know, in particular, the laws surrounding um, uh, copyright. But then on the other hand, there's the issue that sometimes, even if you try and do everything right you'll still do it wrong. And that's because the game publishers have created scenarios that either purposefully, probably not, but uh, likely accidentally ensnare the streamers. Um, we've seen uh, publishers have started, we talked a couple weeks ago, publishers have started including in the purchase of a game, um, uh, a streaming license, a rights license, so that if things get start to get Harry, uh, you have a, a thing that says you have the legal right to stream the game. That's great. Um, we have a couple of games coming out uh, either before the end of the year or early next year, uh, including uh, Cyberpunk that have an, uh, I believe, including Cyberpunk, that have an option uh, in the settings to turn off licensed music. So if you're streaming, uh, you won't get hit for DMCA stuff. That idea, however, did not make its way over to Epic, at least not in time for uh, the Nexus War event that uh, just wrapped. In this event, uh, you play in 10-minute uh, battles against uh, Marvel's uh, Galacticus, but that's not the problem, because so Marvel doesn't care. Um, the problem is, while you're on the battle bus... Uh, ACDC's, ACDC's Demon Fire is playing. Oh, well, that falls under Rhea, and Rhea is who's paying attention. So um, there's a potential 
that even if you try and do everything right, if you were playing and streaming during this time, you could still get DMCA strikes, uh, which technically is a YouTube term, but it has it has uh, kind of caught on for the industry. Um, you could get a DMCA takedown notice, uh, colloquially, colloquially known as a strike, um, having tried to do everything right because this song played and you didn't have a choice. So we're, we're, the, the, the industry is definitely going through growing pains right now. Um, I don't know that, you know, when Justin.TV got started and a bunch of people were, you know, illegally streaming pay-per-view uh, WWE matches, which is mostly how Justin TV got started. Um, they certainly weren't prepared for what it would evolve into, which is Twitch, which is this massive home for uh, for some of the most popular uh, online personalities. I don't think they could have possibly prepared for that, and they did not put an infrastructure in place. And uh, so, so that's what we're seeing now is is those struggles. Yeah. All right. Well, I think the option to turn off music is is a good one mm -hmm. i need i think the, we need to start seeing it more so the interesting question to me is as a streamer might not you want to just turn off all the sound from the game because i mean if you're talking right maybe you want people to hear what you're talking what you're saying so that i can do um i can either turn off the music in the games right i can turn off music i can turn off game sounds or through my streaming setup I can not stream system sound, only my headset, microphone, or whatever. So that right. absolutely is totally possible. A lot of streamers will turn down the game, will turn off the game music, turn down the game sounds so they can talk over top of it, but have it full volume in their headsets. That's how a lot of streamers set up, but it doesn't matter what the volume is, Rhea's going to find it <laughs> if there's music in it. Right, right. <laughs> Right, so, you know, turn off. I mean, I think most games allow you to turn off in-game music. Right? Oh, yeah. Almost all games allow you to turn but off in-game music. Grant, granted, you know, granted, a lot of people won't think to do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that, so that there lies a problem. But I think a lot of people won't, a lot of people won't think to do that. I mean, think about the times we live in that we have to teach you know, young people, children, even about what, about copyright. Mm -hmm. Like I, my son is eight. I had to explain to him copyright because, you know, he will talk about like, we were talking about like, we want to, we want to put up a game that we made, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to put on GitHub. And I was like, oh yeah. You know, he wanted to use Nintendo sounds. And I was like, no, we can't use real Nintendo sounds. What? Why not? Uh, of all the brands, it's the last one you want to use. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, you know, or he'll he'll be doing a, you know, he'll want to, he'll talk all the time. I want to put up a video of this or whatever. And I'll be like, well, you know, is it copyrighted? <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, uh, you got to explain copyright to you know young people yeah to who like we didn't have a concept of that i don't think we had you know a concept of that i had a concept of that in elementary school right right um but now anybody who's publishing online and there are lots of quite young people publishing things online yep. has to be you know familiar with copyright law um Mm -hmm. To some extent, they also probably need to be media trained because True. you don't want to say something outrageous or embarrassing on social media that can come back to haunt you. Right. That'll be there forever <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, so, and get you when you're trying to get a job 10, right. 20 years later. I can't believe what you said when you were 13. Yeah. Um, or God forbid you, know. uh, you lose your scholarship to Harvard. Which was a, a a real life story a couple of years ago. So, 
Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, there's, people, there's everybody's a, a publisher now. There's a lot, a lot of pitfalls here. And, you know, at least on YouTube side, and, you know, we give YouTube crap all the time. If you're not watching this live and you're watching it uh, later on YouTube, there's literally a joke at YouTube's expense at the very end of the video. Um, <laughs> because we, we say... Uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell because notification because subscriptions don't mean anything anymore. We, um, <laughs> they don't do everything right. But during the process of creating content on YouTube now and going live, you know, there's things that you have to agree to. They give you information before you can go live the first time. And there's a 24 hour cooling off period. Um, th there's every time you upload a video, the third panel asks, third or fourth panel, maybe the fourth. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I think it's the third. Asks uh, questions. Are you talking about anything like this or this or this or this? Like they give you and you have to go through it and say, no, 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 yes. Um, yeah, they, they give you things like that. And then... If you violate it, they give you the ability to mute part of the video. Facebook has some of the same things, the ability to mute the thing that's a violation, things like that. But the game streaming world, Twitch in particular, what's the DM DMCA system for them? Uh, delete the video and panic. That's, that is their response to a DMCA takedown. So, you know, they don't have any of that stuff in place. And, you know, that's, those are those growing pains there. You know, when they were little and nobody was paying attention to them, that was one thing, you know, now they're owned by Amazon. They're being paid attention to by obviously everybody. Cause Rhea is obviously indexing uh, stuff on the site. Now, you know, they're, they're, the rules are starting to apply to them. Streamers are having trouble adapting. Obviously, Twitch is having trouble adapting, um, and you know people are getting in trouble. There's no, there's no warning. There's no way to address it. It's just whoop, your stuff's gone, um, and not private, gone. You can't even like download it yourself and fix it, uh, and maybe upload the fixed version to YouTube or something. Like nope, it's gone. Bye bye. So, yeah, I mean. Twitch has also had a problem with dealing with uh, bad behavior mm -hmm. as well, which we talked about a few weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. Where where people will come on and say, you know, come into and like bombard people with racist stuff yep. and hate speech and all that kind of stuff. And then someone will report that person and then like nothing happens. And I believe just this week, uh, Twitch said that they will, they will actually inform the reporter uh of the outcome whereas okay. in the past whether they did whether they took action or decided no action was warranted you didn't you didn't know you didn't hear back from them gotcha yeah, yeah so and, and now that's, they said that they will that's more in line know. that's more in line with like what facebook does right if you report a post on facebook into your uh support in inbox will come a reply we decided this doesn't violate our community standards or yes, this was hate speech or you said it was hate speech. And it turns out it's not really that, but it does violate this. You know, you do get a, a response on that. So that's good. You know, Twitch did say they're working on tools. Obviously this is the world's worst time to be trying to add new things to a system because nobody's actually working together. Um, and you know, s staff numbers are low. Uh, even, even YouTube, you know, talks about how, reports are taking a while. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a terrible time to be trying to do something like that. If you're, uh, corporate environment isn't prepared for it, which obviously Twitch is not. <laughs> so they're, they're going to have to like staff up on all kinds of, of systems, both computer systems and people, uh, processes. So it's going to take some time, uh, for sure, we're going to see some problems, but hopefully it's not just Twitch, right? In this case, the problem comes from Epic <laughs> um, because, because they put licensed music into a game that they know 
most people who play it stream it. There's so many people who stream Fortnite, and they had to have known that this would have been a problem. But no, you know, not everybody in the industry is thinking in those terms uh, because they haven't mattered on Twitch. Do you think until it now. was a marketing? Do you think they this was uh, you? I think we presented this as like Twitch was trying to do its uh, users a solid here by giving them some cool music and you know you mean epic i'm a really big acdc fan you mean epic oh, i'm sorry yeah Fortnite. Uh, epic epic was trying to do right epic was trying to do their fans a solid by giving them you know by playing some music some cool music for them but uh this is a new this is the new single from acdc so do you think this might have been a cross marketing opportunity and that they oh, were getting paid to put it in there oh absolutely almost for sure yeah. um there's, yeah. you know, they've been doing a lot of that. You know, they've had, they've screened movies in game uh, this year. It, Fortnite has become a weird thing. Um, and absolutely, there's almost no chance that that's not what's happening here. Um, but still, you know, if if you look at what has happened to Twitch over the last three months, uh, and we're not even going to get into the the panel of people to help curb hate speech that had a girl who identified as a deer or something. Um, if we just look at what's happened with DMCA, um, you know this this has hurt their reputation publicly. Um, so you'd think that everybody, especially Epic, uh, Epic, you know. Fortnite and Overwatch in particular should be paying attention to every move they make because gamers are going to be scrutinizing those moves because they're the ones that are going to get hurt by it. And that's the the big takeaway here. Epic does something, puts something into into Fortnite, but it's not Epic that gets hurt by the the outcome of that decision. It's the gamers, it's the streamers, and you know, then they get they'll get mad at Epic. We we all know every time EA makes any decision, people get mad at them. Doesn't matter what the decision is, and you know, Epic could be if publishers, not just Epic. I'm not trying to pick on Epic because there's no way they're the only ones that are going to do this, right? Um, if the if the developers and the publishers don't think more about you know, how it affects different aspects of the industry, I think it's going to be a problem for them. So, because they'll lose, they'll lose gamers' uh, respect and trust, and then they become EA, and <laughs> every game that comes out gets publicly trashed. You know, eh. so, no studio wants that. You want to be, you want to be one of those studios that allows people to turn off licensed music. If you want to have background music, great, but it doesn't have to be licensed which I think is a great option. So hopefully we'll see more studios think in those terms. This week's news from the tubes and F5 Live is probably powered by Rift Tracks. Make fun of movies, so let these guys do it for you. Mike Nelson, Bill Corbett, and Kevin Murphy, the former stars of Mystery Science Theater 3000, are back and doing what they do best, creating commentaries for Hollywood blockbusters and B-movie oddities. It's like watching a movie with your funniest friends. And to find out about all of the full-length features, the short films, TV episodes, live events, and more, you can go to f5live.tv slash rifttracks with an X. Oh my goodness. So um, we've talked the last couple of years, one of the industries we've seen uh, with a lot of growth that neither Avram nor I can understand or explain has been chat apps, uh, whether it be, you know, the, the constant new entries into the messenger field or, um, you know, the, the weird back and forth even within, you know, business applications. We've seen a lot of new companies try and get in and existing companies try and kind of bolster what they're doing. Um, on the business side, the story is stranger because there's not as many players 
uh, but they are all interwoven in strange, strange ways. Um, a couple of years ago, Microsoft offered uh, Slack a lot of money for their platform. Slack said, no, thank you. Microsoft said, no problem, we'll go build our own. And they built Teams. When they offered Slack money, Slack was the mostly undisputed leader in the space. Uh, Google had a lot of presence. Skype for Business had some, though it was massively limited because um, Link wasn't great before that. Um, and then, you know, Salesforce had, yeah, exactly. What's it called? Chatter. Um, and, you know, those guys all were playing in the same sandbox. Since Microsoft Teams came out, they have stolen a lot of Slack's thunder. In fact, we've seen uh, teams with a lot more uh, active users because of integrations, right? It's businesses are already using Microsoft technology. And so the integration with all of that saw a lot of companies go that direction. Well, this week uh, we saw that Salesforce has agreed to pay $27.7 billion uh, to acquire Slack. Why? A, because Chatter has had no steam and Slack has had a ton. Um, and because uh, Salesforce already has relationships into enterprise, into business, um, as the top uh, sales tracking and communication platform specifically for sales, it makes total sense for them to want to get into this space. And uh, Salesforce and Microsoft have a, let's say, rocky relationship. So <laughs> being able to challenge them on another front uh, wouldn't make anybody at Salesforce unhappy. <laughs> so it's, it's a ton of money. I still don't understand where these numbers come from. I cannot imagine what it would take to recoup $30 billion in investment into a platform that most people use for free. Uh, but it'll definitely be interesting. You know, so I, I really like Slack. I like it better than Teams. I uh, be, just primarily because it's just so so simple. Um, it doesn't have, but what so simple also means not integrated with things like Teams mm -hmm. is integrated with integrates so much with your Office suite. So mm -hmm. if you are not, a, you know, if you are not committed and w working with other people who are committed to Microsoft. Microsoft uh, Office Suite stuff, um, Teams is not is not great. Although my son's school uses it for some things, mm -hmm. um, it's been so it's been real popular uh, in schools. Microsoft saw a big uh, so, a big boom there. So, uh, and and Slack. To be fair, I mean, like Teams is pretty decent at video conferencing. Mm -hmm. Slack. I don't even think you can do, I mean, you can do video calls. I've done video calls. I don't know how many people you can actually get onto a Slack call. Ma I've only done one-to-one. -one. So I have a client that uses both. Um, and I see Slack on the same computer. I see Slack choke at four. Um, and we've had calls with 60 uh on teams we didn't fill the six the new 64 grid i wanted to i so badly wanted to fill the new 64 grid um but we missed by just a little bit um anyway yeah the the video on slack definitely chokes early but that's not yeah, what it was intended I mean, it, for it's very right but i mean that's something that's really lacking on slack is mm -hmm. like why people have google meet they have zoom they have teams now mm -hmm. and webex like slack should be upping their game when it comes to video because you shouldn't have to have like one client for text and mm -hmm. another client for for video and audio and that's been part of why and slack has struggled over right. over the last like two years um as as we've seen you know microsoft teams usage go through the roof 
Um, Slack has mostly stagnated and even dropped in a couple of quarters. Uh, and it's because, you know, they're not Microsoft. They're not WebEx. They're not Oracle. You know, they're not Salesforce. They don't have the resources necessarily to put behind um, development of of big, flashy, quick uh, features. You know, Teams has come out of nowhere in the last two and a half years, essentially. Um, and, you know, they're they're able to, to quickly add new things. It used to be that the grid, literally, uh, in, like, August, the grid for Teams was was three by three. It was nine. Um, and it, the, the lockdown started to happen. People said, we need more, we need more capability. And Microsoft was able to roll out eight by eight, which is 64, um, quick. And that's because they've got all those resources, right? They're a cloud company. They're a big developer. They've got resources and Slack just doesn't have those resources. It's not been part of their culture to be quick. I mean, for God's sake, how long did it take for threaded conversations in Slack? <laughs> right? I mean, that right. I mean, that was years of people I, saying we need threaded conversations. And I think we got it this year. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it you know, took forever. You know who's really, who's kind of the hidden loser in this is Google. Uh-huh. Um, like, mm -hmm. what is Google, like, what is Google's response to all this like the hybrid app you would that three-way or four-way I mean, hybrid I... app where they brought gmail hangouts something else i don't know there's four tabs across the bottom i think um, that's been their response just to create one app that has tabs for their things which i mean was quick and to the point but still not obviously still not great I mean, it's, it's just, it seems strange because, I mean, like at my job, we use Hangouts for all, we use G Suite for everything and we use Hangouts for all of our video meetings, but we use Slack for moment to moment communication. And it just seems like such a, like, it's strange that like Microsoft has Teams, what's Google, you know? I mean, granted, Google has tried and and pulled the plug a million times on things like that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, although I don't know if they ever had anything that was really good for like group messaging, like like Slack is but... Spaces, right? Yeah, that was discontinued they... in twenty seventeen. They didn't even uh, right. they didn't even give it a full year. Right? Yeah, they so. I don't know. The uh, that seemed like a mistake to me, um, because if you're going to play in the office space, then this seems to be an essential part of collaboration today. And Slack is now. I don't see how what's going on with Salesforce is going to help. I mean, I guess investing money in them might help, but money and resources. Um, um, plus the relationships within the companies. Um, so many big businesses use Salesforce as their as their sales and uh, customer tracking systems um, that they already have a, a hand in those companies. And that's one of the things that Slack was missing, right? Was, well, what do they do? Well, they do Slack. <laughs> Whereas Microsoft has lots of things. Salesforce has lots of things. And, you know, if they can offer it as a bundle because teams didn't cost anything extra uh, for for the companies that are already Microsoft customers. It was part of their Microsoft 365 subscription. Uh, just whoop. It's just part of it. And so, you know, that that got a lot of attention from Microsoft customers. So with Salesforce having on the other side of things, on the sales side of the world, them already having a hand in those companies, they might be able to, to, I think they're going to try and leverage that to, to get more attention back to Slack while putting, having the resources. Salesforce is a cloud company. They don't produce a public cloud, but they do have their own private, you know, data structure. 
that they can, you know, and server structure and stuff that they can put Slack into to bring costs down, things like that. You know, there's there's things that, that can come from this relationship that can help uh, put Slack back out in uh, people's companies' uh, mm, buying... <laughs> I can't. Oh, the word's gone. Oh, vendor. Vendor list. Put Slack back on their vendor list, which when it's another company that you have to pay, that's a lot harder. You know, my, uh, the, the, the client I work with is trying to limit the number of vendors that they're interacting with and they're trying to pull back on certain stuff. And, you know, I see that in a lot of companies and, you know, you're already working with Salesforce. It's not a new vendor. That'll help. So, plus, you know, the ability to do integrations. There's already some pretty decent uh, Slack and Salesforce integrations. Um, this will obviously bring us more. So, for those people who are using it, uh, it'll be natural, and that garbage that is chatter will get to go away. So, for <laughs> for Salesforce people, it'll be a win-win for sure. This week's DRM not included in F5 Live is probably powered by Amazon Prime. In addition to your uh, to your free shipping, you get a lot of stuff like free music with Amazon Prime Music, free TVs, movies, and documentaries with Amazon Prime Video, free games, and a free subscription on Twitch with Amazon Prime Gaming, and a whole lot more. You can learn more, get a 30-day free trial, give Prime as a gift, and find quick links to all these features and more, all by going to f5live.tv slash Prime. Obviously, we know that 2020 has not been a banner year for movie theaters. It hasn't been a banner year for a lot of uh, industries, but um, movie theaters are an industry that's been hard hit by the year because... It requires people to be with people that they don't know in a closed environment. And it's the only way that movie theaters work. Uh, with the exception of, of uh, AMC's rent out the theater for 200 bucks uh, thing that's been going on, which is actually a pretty good deal when you look at it. Not what we're talking about, though. Uh, what we're talking about is new releases uh, coming to theaters. There haven't been a lot... Um, and as we talked about with Fortnite, we've seen some movies go so far as to do uh, virtual premieres within Fortnite um, or, or you know, boost up their premiere by doing events in the game in time to do virtual releases through streaming platforms. We saw Disney do it uh, with Mulan, which was supposed to come to theaters and got pushed to uh, Disney Plus instead. One of the movies that has been pushed back and back and back uh, so many times that we joked that there was no way the release date of Christmas was going to happen has been Wonder Woman uh, 1984. We kept joking that there was no way that Christmas was going to happen because there was no way theaters were going to have enough business to do it. And we were mostly right. Uh, Warner worked with the movie theaters to allow the movie to come out both in theaters and on HBO Max on the same day uh, so that people will have a choice. And there's a, there's an agreement on on you know revenue sharing and things like that. Well, Warner Media got super excited about this and decided to announce that they would run all of their 2021 films the same way. The thing they forgot to do was to tell the theaters that uh, with whom they have agreements uh, on the window through which you can release stuff to streaming or TV or DVD or whatever. And so they announced all of their 2021 films will release on HBO Max the same day as theaters, and AMC lost it. <laughs> the response was intense. The CEO uh, said... Uh, went so far as to say that uh, Warner Media was doing it as a way to prop up their failing startup, which is HBO Max, which I mean is a huge slam to the to the company. Um, but 
maybe not all that uh, off because Avram and I have talked about it. I haven't, I haven't been swayed over there yet. Um, if you watch me on Friday nights on uh, the GNC Week in Review, once a month we talk about the stuff that's coming to, <laughs> to HBO Max. Never has there been something where I'm like, all right, I'm finally in. That's the one. Uh, so, you know, it's possible. I don't know anybody who's subscribed to it. So it's possible that they're using it as a way to, to try and prop up HBO Max. Um, it sounds like it's going to be good for consumers if it actually happens. You know, $15 a month and new releases are going to be available without, you know, the need to, to buy or what Disney did, pay something extra for Mulan. You know, I could yeah. be pretty good for consumers. How bad must you feel if you're paying for HBO at this point? Like, what is HBO Max seems to be where they're putting all of the all the resources for sure. HBO regular is just kind of taken for granted. Um, well, I mean, this is interesting because I was reading people saying that like this is kind of sort of sound of the death knell of of movie theaters mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that the Avengers Endgame was the end game for big blockbuster movies. I've seen a lot of it's people say something time, like that. The last time, of, you know, you will see a movie make that kind of money at the movie theater and, you know, a lot of movie theaters are going to close. Uh, I mean, I think that, it, that Warner is just has made the calculation that a lot of studios have that like we are not going to be able to release these movies into movie theaters anytime soon mm -hmm. uh, and get and, and get any type of any type of traction at least in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the COVID nineteen situation continues to be uh, really really bad right now around the world mm -hmm. and we're seeing especially in the United States we're seeing you know huge spikes in like Germany and things like that as well. So another big like yeah. movie target, you know, a movie destination uh, country is also seeing big spikes. So you know, these, these places that they rely on to try and pay for a movie and a movie with the budget, the big budget of something like, like wonder woman is going to be hard to pay off. Yeah. So here's the thing though. I, what I don't, well, I think I understand it, but I don't totally understand it. Why they don't just hold the movie for another year or something like they could just stick it in the vault. Right. And, and, and think that, okay, movie theaters may come back in a year. Maybe there's a vaccine, maybe things get better. Um, but what I was reading is a lot of these movies, they take loans. So they're mm -hmm. losing money every month that they hold it. Yep. Um, nevertheless, they're going to make like zero. Um, close to zero because they're, you know, I, I doubt there's going to be a lot of people going to see in the movie theater. Right. And, but, and frankly, but, they shouldn't, but you might see a spike in HBO max subscriptions is what, which is what they're hoping for. HBO max has removed their free trial, uh, which is not unexpected. Uh, Netflix has done the same thing already. So I think we all kind of expected that services like HBO max might go the same way. Um, so, no free trial. So if you were hoping to see Diana Prince on a seven day free trial, not going to happen. Uh, and um, so, you know, if you want to see it, you're going to have to subscribe to a $15 package, but you're not going to have to do the Disney thing and pay an extra 30 bucks to see it, uh, which will be nice. But I think they're, I think they're looking at this the way Netflix looks at stranger things, right? Like their, their flagships. I think they're looking, you know, if we have in December, if we do uh, Wonder Woman, then we do Dune, then we do the Matrix 4, you know, we've got these kind of tentpole things that maybe we can do what has happened to you and I <laughs> with Netflix, where every time we think, oh, you know what, I haven't watched anything exciting on Netflix in a while, oh, then... Uh, Friday morning, uh, big mouth season four hits, you know, <laughs> maybe they might be trying to do the same thing, uh,
which might or might not work. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Um, but like you said, with a with a big loan to be able to pay for for the production of these films, at at some point they have to pay them back before before they're in in huge trouble. So it's a challenge. It's a it's a it's a weird time for everybody, but especially for industries that require you know large upfront capital to make something happen, like the the big budget movie business. It 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 does beg the question of whether or not these types of movies will just stop being made, at least for a um, while. Yeah, we I, there on, there was a a big period of time where this type of film wasn't being made, and then we saw a big resurgence because of. You know, Marvel. And then maybe we'll see another gap. Maybe it's time for another gap because there's way too many remakes and nonsense like The Matrix 4 that <laughs> that, that maybe didn't I need mean, to be made in the first place. Yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about The Matrix 4. Like, I really liked the first one, and then the second and third one completely ruined the first one for me. Mm-hmm. So... I have always <laughs> I really hate it. I have always told I have always said that that two and three feel like unrelated films that just used the same actors and gave them the same character names. Cuz they don't feel it, they don't feel like they un- take place in the same place. It made the first movie look worse. Like it was like, "Oh, I I really thought this was cool, but now I didn't realize how, you know, yeah. Anyway, uh, there there was a there so, was a TV show that came out a couple of years ago that I didn't want to watch um, because I was afraid that it was going to make me hate one of the actors and therefore hate one of my favorite TV shows a little, and it did. Yeah. I was I, I kept being told you've got to watch you got to watch it. It's so great, and I hated the show so much that it makes me hate him a little bit, and it makes me hate the show that I loved a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I understand. I mean, it's like. <laughs> It's like Highlander when I, I don't know if you've seen all the Highlanders or whatever, but the first Highlander came out and it was fantastic. It was a great movie for its time. What was it? 1989, 1987, something, something like, like that. that. And then, and then Highlander two came out and they, ch- and they retconned the whole thing that now they're all aliens, right? They were, instead of being like mystical humans who live forever, they're aliens for the planet Zeist or something. And we're like, Oh no, you just totally like you totally ruined the previous movie for me now it's like did you did you not listen to your own script there can be only one back off yeah there's (laughs) there's always one more um there can be only one more um but uh, he said that one under his breath I, i i mean this might get me to subscribe to HBO Max because I really want to see Wonder Woman. Um, me too. The uh, because Dune. The, the director is back. Uh, she had only signed on for one. Yeah. She's back, and I think she was a lot to do with why the first one was so well received yeah. because she, you know, she wanted it to be more realistic. Um, you know, her legs move when she lands. Oh, what a concept! <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I want to see that. Um, but, yeah, after that, I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, because I guess we'll... nobody's ever made a made a, a compelling live-action Dune anything. And I've been annoyed with The Matrix since the first one. <laughs> uh, also, I think Suicide Squad 2 is on here, is, is on the agenda Yeah, I think, well. right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Although the first one was... Really not good, but um, but this one could be good. Um, who who knows? I mean, and they're gonna have a bunch of series, so it might it might be be worth it. I'm gonna see if I can cancel my regular HBO and just go to HBO Max. But um, so I guess I guess we'll see. I mean, this is certainly gonna probably help them drive some subscriptions, but is it? I mean, how much money does it make to make? take to make wonder woman is not like a 200 million dollar film um and then i think all of these are like 200 million dollar movies so they're giving away like a billion dollars of content or something although netflix is doing the same thing 
You absolutely nailed it. Right, right on the head. Two hundred million is what the current estimated budget for the film is. Now Netflix, you know, but you know Netflix. I'll just mention this. I was reading Netflix is doing the same thing, net and and probably at a lower level of quality because it wasn't never meant for the movie theater. So, um, they, I mean, think of some of the movies that they've made that they've spent like a hundred million plus on. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that one with Will Smith? Bright. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bright. They, I think they spent like 150 million on or something, like 50 percent of which was his salary, um, and and apparently now Netflix is coming out with a spy thriller called The Gray Man, that is going to be directed by the Russo brothers and starring Chris Evans mm-hmm. and. Um, ryan gosling and they're spending 200 million on that so i'm literally I guess if netflix i'm literally money, looking at at netflix budgets right now and that's listed as number one i i just read about it today so it's it, uh, it occurred to me the ir um, the irishman was 159 red notice 150 six underground 150 outlaw king 120 Triple Frontier, 115. It's fascinating. I've heard of almost none of these. Bright was only 90. Um, oh, okay. Project Power, 85. The Ridiculous Six. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I cannot believe that's on this list. Uh, 60. <laughs> Okja, I think is how it's pronounced. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, uh, Korean thing, uh, 50. Those are your top 10. Yeah. So huge range from 50 to 200. So Netflix, Netflix has been known to spend 200 on a movie on, on the movie. So maybe it's not impossible that they keep making $200 million movies for, for subscription services, but, but they, but they won't and, be, and but they me, won't be common. That's it. what we're seeing from Netflix here is based on those numbers. They won't be common. They'll happen, but they won't happen often. Well, you know, I, I mean, at least, at least, you know, Wonder Woman is probably worth 200 million. Sure. Sure. All right. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, I mean this, I think it, I think it's, a. this could be for those who like the movies, who like the movies that have been coming out, this could mean fewer of them, mm-hmm. uh, which, which would be a shame. And, uh, it's certainly uh certainly a might be a death knell for the communal experience of going to the movies which you know ha- definitely has its downsides but or or maybe you know i maybe it's going maybe the death of the the megaplex right it, maybe not theaters in general but maybe just the the big 20 30 screen megaplexes you know maybe we go back to a to a couple screen you know small theater where the where theater one shows three different movies in a day instead of dedicating theater one just to dune for four weeks yeah maybe i mean i uh it's rare i i love to go to and it's you just don't see it too much like a really nice movie theater, mm-hmm. like a really old fashioned movie palace type of yeah. experience. And uh, like, like the, like the one that I have in the header image for this, for this article <laughs> on the website, uh, which is an Ohio, I think an Ohio movie theater that outside it's got like a, an old theater theater style marquee and things like that. So, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I hope at least those, those theaters stick around. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that that'll be what we see. You know, your your AMC 36 <laughs> will stop being quite the thing and you'll start seeing you know, the old, like you said, the old movie palace type type concept come back. So I don't know. I think I think this is going to create a in general, I think the end result of 2020 will be an overall rethinking of, of the massive expansion of, 
of certain industries. You know, the Texification. <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I think I think we're going to see that concept start to to evaporate, probably for the better. Well, that is our show. Thank you to those of you who uh, joined us live. We appreciate it. We always uh, love our live viewers. If you didn't and would like to join us in the future, uh, you can do that Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern by going to f5live.tv slash join us. Uh, If you cannot join us live, that is okay. There are lots of ways that you can uh, follow us. You can go to plugkidslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all of the different ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along, whether it be on a podcast or on social media, uh, over on YouTube, wherever you want to join us. Um, we've got the, uh, we've got the holidays coming up. Um, but, uh, we've been talking, uh, I'm going to spring this on Avram right now. One of the, (laughs) one of the things that we've been talking about, uh, within TPN has been, um, putting together a little bit of, a like a, an end of the year tech spring cleaning. Is there, are there things that you do at the end of your year um, that, that help you make sure that you're not going into the next year with weird things? Do you defrag your hard drives? Do you check your devices for certain things? Do you uninstall apps that you don't use? Let us know what those things are uh, so we can all help each other. Uh, start 2020 uh, 2021 on a bit of a um cleaner and uh more uh more normal note so let us know what on on social media wherever you can find us uh we will appreciate that we'll be putting that out before the end of the year and uh with that on behalf of the staff that's not here i'm scott i'm Avram, and we will see you back next time ciao Hello, YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of F5 Live Refreshing Technology. If you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel down below, and of course, hit the notification bell because we know that subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, If you've got topics that you'd like us to talk about in the future, please uh, comment them down below. And if you'd like to not follow us on YouTube, there's lots of ways that you can follow along with our content by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all of the ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.